Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today's video is we're going to be going over the three financial statements, which is uh, the income statement, we have the balance sheet, and lastly, the cash flow statement. Okay, so let's start off at the very top. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create the income statement. And the income statement is basically sort of a, a snapshot of the company's performance in terms of sales, expenses, and profits. Okay, so let's start off with the top line. The first one is going to be, you want to get the sales number. So we have $3,850 for 2016, and we have $3,400 for 2015. The cost of goods sold is $3,200 and $2,800 for 2015. Our gross profit is going to be $600 in 2016 and $500 five hundred and sixty eight dollars in 2015 and the way you calculate this is you simply subtract the cost of goods sold from the sales and that gives you the gross profit margin gross profit all right next we move on to expenses our first expense line item is selling and general administrative expenses we have three hundred and thirty three dollars for 2016 and two hundred and forty dollars for 2015 our fixed expenses which is basically like uh, uh, rent, rent payments for the building, uh, utility, maybe uh, utility bills. Uh, these are going to be $100 for 2016 and also $100 for 2015. All right, uh, the company has recorded some depreciation expenses for the equipment for $20 in 2016 and $18.90 for 2015. Uh, that takes us to earnings before interest and taxes. And the, the way you calculate this formula is... You take the gross profit and then you subtract all the expenses and that gives you the earnings before interest and taxes. All right, the next step we want to do is we want to calculate the interest expense. Uh, so for 2016, the interest expense was $76 and 2015, the interest expense was $62.50. All right, that takes us to our next uh, earnings line item is earnings before taxes. And you're just going to subtract the earnings before interest and taxes, subtract the interest expense, and that gives you earnings before taxes. All right, so now we want to calculate the uh, amount of taxes we're going to pay for the earnings. Uh, down below here, we have a 40% corporate tax rate. And the way you calculate taxes is you're going to multiply the, the tax rate times the earnings before taxes. All right, and that's going to give us $29.48 for 2016 and $58 in 2015. Uh, and the reason why we're paying higher taxes in 2015 is because we had higher earnings. All right, and then that leads us to the last item here, which is the net income. So for 2015, 2016, we had $44 of $22 of net income. In 2015, we had $87.96 of net income. All right, so that's the income statement. So now let's go over to the balance sheet. So the balance sheet is basically a snapshot of the company's uh, financial accounts. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the assets. So for, for assets, we first want to figure out what are all the current assets. And basically, all current any asset that is considered... Uh, to be held for less than one year is considered a current asset. We'll start off with cash. So the company has $52 uh, in cash, uh, $57 in last year, and then we move on to accounts receivable. For accounts receivable, we have $402 uh, versus the previous year, we have $351. As far as inventory goes, the company has $836 in 2016, and seven hundred and fifteen dollars in two thousand fifteen. So we add up the total current assets, and that gives us twelve hundred ninety dollars for the current year, and then eleven hundred for for eleven hundred twenty four dollars for the previous year. All right. Next up, we have uh, uh, fixed assets, net fixed assets of plant and equipment for five hundred and twenty seven dollars, uh, four ninety one for previous year. And the company here is where you uh, you account for any accumulated appreciation. So $166 of accumulated appreciation and 
$146 for the previous year. Now, be sure that when you calculate uh, the Netflix assets, you want to depreciate uh, the, the plant and the equipment. So let's just say this is a piece of equipment for $527. Uh, over the course of the year, the company uh, accumulated some depreciation for that equipment. So you subtract that to get your net fixed assets and we're at $360 and $344 for the previous year. All right, simply get the total asset number, which is gonna, you're gonna add up the uh, total current assets plus the net fixed assets and you should get $1,650. We'll copy that formula over and there you go. All right, next up we have liabilities. So we have uh, some accounts payable of $175, $145 for the previous year. Short-term notes payable, we have $225 and $200 for the previous year. Other current liabilities, we have $140 and $136 for the previous year. All right, to add up your current liabilities, you're going to simply add up those three and you get your total current liabilities. Now the same rule applies for the current liabilities. Any, uh, any payables or, or short-term notes within less than one year is considered a current liability. Anything uh, more than one year is considered a long-term debt. So that leads us to the next item, which is long-term debt. Uh, the company has $424 for 2016 and $323 for the previous year. Uh, and then simply to get your total liabilities, you're going to add up your current liabilities plus the long-term debt. So $964 for, the, for 2016 and 805 for the previous year. All right, company stock, uh, the company has 460, the same was from the previous year. And in 2016, the company re retained $225 of retained earnings and 203 in the previous year. So to calculate the total shareholder equity, you're gonna simply add common stock and retained earnings. And then to add up your total uh, liabilities and ownership, you're simply going to add the total liabilities plus total shareholder equity. Now, before we move on, uh, we want to make sure that the total liability and owner's equity matches the total amount of assets. So as you see, uh, total assets is $1,650. Uh, total liability is $1,650 as well. So you want to make sure your balance sheet uh, is in balance, and if there's if it's not in balance, then then there's uh, probably an incorrect uh, input within the sheet. All right. Lastly, we're going to go over the cash flow statement. Uh, the the cash flow statement is, is basically how you determine the the cash inflows and outflows of the business, and this basically tells you you know what's going into the business and what's coming out. Uh, so we'll start off with the cash flows from operations. Uh, the top line is going to be your, the net income. And, and here you want to link up from the income statement. So as you see, $44, $44 uh, we'll scroll up to the income statement. That was our net income for 2016. All right. The next uh, line item is depreciation expense. Uh, we had a depreciation expense of $20. Same thing. You'll find the depreciation expense in the income statement. And uh, I'll explain to you why we're including it in the cash flow operations in just a sec. All right, the next thing we want to figure out is what was the change in accounts receivables? Now, if, if, if the accounts receivable uh, is an increase from the previous year, we want to subtract that. And the reason is because we, we didn't actually receive any cash. Uh, it's, it's, it's money that is owed to us from the customer, uh, but the company has yet to see it in actual cash. So we're going to go ahead and subtract the change. And the way you can figure this out uh, is by going to the balance sheet and you'll see it here. So in 2015, uh, we had $350 of accounts receivables and in 2016, we had an increase to $420. And so you want to take the, the difference of this and you want to subtract it uh, because it's not, we haven't seen, we have yet to see this cash. Uh, once it's converted to cash, you will eventually see it in the cash line item uh, just above here. All right, so we're gonna enter that, and we have a negative change of $50. And the same goes for inventory. So th the concept for inventory is that, that the company uh, increased the amount of inventory it has in its warehouse. Uh, so that usually what, what that means is the, the company has paid for 
uh, this inventory. So that's that's going to represent a cash outflow because the company is paying cash to to purchase the inventory. All right. So we're also we're going to subtract that again because it's part of the operations. All right. The next uh, line item here is the change in accounts payable. This line item here, uh, we want to increase. And again, you can find this on the balance sheet. So you'll notice that in 2016, uh, that there's a higher accounts payable. And this could be uh, money that was given to us uh, and we owe it to, and we owe either the good or the service to the customer, uh, but they've already paid us for it. So it's, it's a liability because we still need to perform the, the service or we still need to deliver the good. Uh, but we've already received the cash from the customer. So that's why we're going to add, add it to the cash flows from operations. And the same goes for current li liabilities. So we have four additional dollars that we received, wh which we're still liable for. Um, and so the reason why we're adding depreciation is because depreciation is not is a non-cash expense so we there's really not a cash transaction when we're depreciating the asset uh, so so if we if we're recording or reporting a $20 uh, depreciation expense there was really never a, a, a transaction that took place there so technically we still have this money in our account um, so we're gonna go ahead and add it uh, back into the cash flow from operations. All right, now that should give us everything we need to calculate the cash flow from operations. And as you see there, we're simply taking the net income, we're adding the depreciation, uh, we're, we're subtracting, or I, you could say adding, but we're, it's really a decrease in cash from accounts receivables, and it's also a decrease in cash for inventories. And then we're adding the accounts payable, uh, and the current liability, which is money that we have, but we're still liable uh, in, in some form of service or delivery of good. All right, so we have negative $73 of cash flows from operations. Now let's look at cash flows from investing. Uh, we want to take the change in plant and equipment. Uh, so let's take a look at what this looks like. It looks like there was a, a change of $36. Uh, and we'll go. You'll find us on the balance sheet. And so, in 2015, we had 491 dollars in plant and equipment, and in 2016, we had 527 dollars of plant and equipment. And so, again, the company had to pay cash to invest in new equipment, and so that's going to show up as a cash outflow in our cash flow statement. And that that negative cash flow is 36 dollars. All right, so we have negative uh, $36 for cash flows from investing. And then the, the last section of the cash flow statement is going to be cash flows from financing. So if you notice, we didn't include uh, uh, short-term notes payable in the cash flow operations. Uh, this is because uh, a note is, is a source of financing, which is typically uh, basically known as debt. Um, so the company took on uh, $25 of additional debt in notes, and you'll see that in the balance sheet again. Uh, so if you scroll up to the balance sheet, uh, in 2015, the company had $200 of note payables, uh, which is which the company is li liable for. And in 2016, the company increased its, its note payables to $225, so $25 increase. And, and again, so think of it uh, like a credit card charge where uh, we got cash. And then, okay, now we have change in long-term debt, which is $101. Uh, and again, this is a source of financing. So typically when we're adding debt, uh, we're seeing a cash inflow. And you see that in the balance sheet uh, when the long-term debt increased to 424 for the current year. And so that's going to be a... Uh, a uh, cash inflow. All right, change in common stock. Uh, we saw that the the value of the common stock was the same. Uh, did it not did not change. And then now we're uh, moving on to cash dividends paid to shareholders. Uh, and so the way we're going to calculate cash is we want to take the 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 way we're going to calculate dividends is we want to take the net income 
and we want to subtract uh, by the difference of retained earnings. So from the balance sheet, you'll see that the company uh, increased its retained earnings uh, by two, $225. So you want to take the difference of this and subtract it from the net income because um, the, the difference of this is the money that, that was paid out. And, and so you're going to subtract the money that, that was paid to shareholders from the net income. And, and we're, we're entering this as a negative number because the company is paying the shareholders this cash. So it's, it's leaving our accounts and it's going to shareholder accounts. Uh, so that's going to show up as a negative cash flow, as a cash outflow. And, um, and then that gives us our total cash flow from investing. And again, we're just going to, we're going to add in our, our no payable finance. We're going to add in our long-term debt, which is money that we received from either the banks or lenders. And then we're going to subtract the cash that we paid out in dividends to investment shareholders. And that leads us to the bottom line, which is the net change in cash balance. And the way we calculate this one is by simply adding the cash flow from operations, which was a negative number, cash flow from uh, investment, and cash flow from financing. And uh, we have a total of negative $5.06. So that's how you build a three financial statement uh, uh, statements. And again, starts off with the income statement to fi figure out the company's performance. We move on to the balance sheets, which shows the financial health of the company. And then we, 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 we build the cash flows uh, statement to figure out the cash inflows and outflows. In another video, uh, we'll go over how to calculate uh, financial ratios to, to figure out you know, the company's performance in terms of, of, of ratios and metrics and, and to determine uh, how profitable um, and successful this company is. Uh, thank you for watching. If you uh, found this video helpful or have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe and like the video, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.